show CD. And coming soon, dog t-shirts. So even clothing has gone to the dogs. JiggyJaguar.com The Jiggy Jaguar Show is the number one internet talk radio show on planet Earth. It is the world famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. We are back up and running at JiggyJaguar.com. We're also on Livestream.com slash Jiggy Jaguar. Uh, you can get everything available at J-I-G-G-Y-J-A-G-U-A-R.com. KJagRadio.com. Uh... I want to thank everybody for joining us this week here on the World Famous Jiggy Jake Way Show. I also want to thank you, the listener, for uh, making us last for 17 freaking years. This is amazing. And uh, I do this every year. It's uh, it's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Um, Mark Summers, the Talk Like a Pirate guy, his interview will be included on the podcast of this broadcast. So download the podcast if you want to hear Mark Summers. If not, go to JiggyJaguar.com, search for Best Bits. You'll probably be able to find it over there if you dig hard enough. Um, we want to thank our good friend, uh, finally able to get the Black Pavarotti on the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar you show, Dave Tolliver. I want to thank him. Uh, uh, we also heard from my close personal longtime friend, my mentor himself, Mr. Frank Catolo. We left a message for Brother Ken. Hopefully he'll call us back uh, when he gets done celebrating about the Chiefs. Um, Frank Arena joined us today. Uh, me and Frank have, uh, we've never had any real problems, but I had a lot of problems with the people that he associates with. But, uh, th- things are worked out. Me and Frank are buds. You uh, call them dissociates. Yes, indeed. Yes, okay. Uh, Brock LaRob was going to join us today, but he doesn't understand how to do Skype. So, we Learn got- it, people. That we're going all Skype. So learn it. <laughs> uh, I want to thank uh, Jessica Drake for uh, sending us a tweet. She said she would be on uh, in the next month or so on She's on a big Skype. perv magnet, isn't she? Yes, indeed. A professional perv magnet. A professional magnet. perv magnet. And uh, my good friend Anthony Gomes told me that he is in Canada and gets horrible self service. And uh, we tried to call Tim Hewell's camp, but uh, he turned his answering machine off and he won't chat with us. Uh, so that's kind of odd. He's angry, or He's something very angry. like a politician should be. We want to thank our listeners in Hungary, Japan, Bulgaria, and Belgium. That's Hungary. Hungary. Like you're hungry, but with an A. Exactly. And uh, joining us on Skype, we're skyping it. Is uh, Evan Tuttle and the good friends at the Manhattan Music Coalition? They are going to be talking about Aggie Fest 2010, which is. Uh, Got such great acts as uh, Sabretooth and um, Breakpoint Method and some other great local acts. We will get into the uh, entire rundown here in just a few with these guys. And uh, I I welcome them on Skype. What's going on? I'm going well. It's just me, so I couldn't make it, and I can't see you. You can't can't see me. You cannot see you. You cannot see him. True. Darn, we can both see, uh, maybe I can do something, I will, I will try while we uh, do this, he but could. we're seeing you good, and we're hearing you good, so if you don't see us, just pretend like you do. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to work on it. Well, let, let's talk about it, Aggie Fest 2010, the 5th Annual Aggie Fest, brought to you by uh, Manhattan Music Coalition, they're actively booking Aggie Fest. Um, signed up to play so far as of Tuesday, 9-7-2010. Uh, lots of these bands we've had on Jiggy Check TV. A Grave Calling is going to be there. They actually were, uh, I believe, in studio with us uh, a while back here at the uh, here at the Sunday Radio Show. Um, lot, lots of other uh, great acts. Uh, Dismantle the Virus uh, is going to be playing. Drop Jaw, which is a, a hip-hop act, which... Hopefully they will make their way to the uh, the Jiggy Jag show very soon. Uh, Joey Farr and the Fuggins Wheat Band will be there. What is the name of some of these bands? What is this? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool, I there, guess. There, there, is a, there is a band. <laughs> there is already taken, so they just start making up words at some point. That's uh-huh. right. Yeah, because they'll, they'll be sued for using a registered service mark. That's right. Uh, well, that's never happened. but uh, <laughs> Also, Kiss and Tell will be there. We had them on Jiggy Jag TV. Also, uh, 
the band Millions of Boys, which would be hilarious if it was an all-girl group. That would be. Uh, but, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Miss, yeah. Mr. Chaz is going to be there, and he was, of course, uh, with Sabretooth when they uh, came down here for uh, the Jiggy Jaguar show. Scott Allen Nost uh, will be there as well. Sorrow by Truth. My boys in Sorrow by Truth are going to make the trip to Manhattan. Also, the Breakpoint Method. And uh, the Dead Girls, which hopefully they're perv magnets. Um, they better be. Uh, Tommy Lee, who is a solo act. Actually guys. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, another Kinsey Six? You remember um, Ultimate Fake Book and Podstar? Yes, indeed. I so remember these them. These are, these are a combination of those two bands, and they formed a new group called Dead Girls Ruin Everything. And then about a year ago, they changed their name to Just the Dead Girls. And uh, they live in Lawrence now, but they're Manhattan folks, and they come up here quite a bit, and they will be headlining Aggie Fest. Oh, wow. So they're good looking? <laughs> yeah, they're perv magnets. Good, good. <laughs> they, they, they wear like, like, like uh, torn uh, stockings and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, do they have, per- do no, they have pursi- no. piercings in their toes? No, not at all. Okay, none of that. They're not that kinky. All right. uh, also, also joining uh, will be the terrible airplane who I've been trying to get on uh, the radio show for like two years now. They that sounds have, cool. They always have some reason why they can't come up to. It's Salina. like a bad Jefferson airplane. That's right. Okay, or a good one. And uh, <laughs> also uh, appearing will be, as I mentioned, Sabretooth, Sabretooth Tiger, the big star. He's the rap element. <laughs> yes. Is uh, that the only rapper you're going to have? No. No. There's uh, Mr. Chaz, Drop Jaw, um, a few others, TK and Supa. Sopa? Oh. Uh, Sopa, is that what it is? Supa. I, 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 I don't know what it is. We, we, we know a guy by the name of Supa Dave. S-U-P-A. <laughs> Supa. Supa. <laughs> so there's, there's quite a bit of hip-hop here, actually. Oh, yeah, and we're wanting to tap that market here on the Jiggy Jaguar Show. That's right. And KJag Radio. Now, uh, tell, tell me how you guys got Aggie Fest put together. G- give, give, me, uh, give, give me the big story here. Five years. Well, uh, five years ago, there was a group where the Manhattan Music Coalition and I got asked to join by a friend of mine, and they were looking at getting the name out there and uh, kind of reviving the local Manhattan music scene because it had been really relevant back in the 90s, and people missed that. So back then, uh, MySpace was brand new. So I said, well, I can make a MySpace page for you, and we'll start working on a, a music festival because uh, throwing parties, doing events, that's just kind of my one of my things that I bring to the table. And uh, so we pulled it off. It was only one day. It was October, I want to say 20th, 2006, or 22nd. It was a Saturday, whatever. And <laughs> it was a Saturday, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was only uh, one day, and the weather was horrible. But everybody had so much fun, they wanted to do it again in the spring. So we did another festival, and we called it the Kanza Music Festival after our you know, wild, our uh, nature preserve south of town, and uh, that was a big hit, but we had that in Aggieville just like we had Aggie Fest. It's kind of like a South by Southwest model, so it's in a, a business uh, entertainment district, and it's at different venues throughout the district. So we had Kanza there in the spring of 07, but Kanza is intended to be a camping festival, so we haven't done it since because we're still trying to consort um, to... Uh, nail down rules and laws and regulations and all that stuff so that we can... The state of Kansas doesn't like people to have fun. Right. Unfortunately, right. and... We like to regulate the fun out of things. But yes. If you comply with the rules, it's always a lot easier. Which means no sex, no smoking, and no fire pits or bonfires. We Something like that. <laughs> so... I was trying to kill a fly on my microphone. Sorry about that. Go ahead. <laughs> now, uh, you guys have, uh, have have rounded up some sponsors for this thing. A few. Uh, um, wh- one, of, one of those sponsors is, of course, uh, Wildcat 919, which uh, is home to uh, our good friend Paul Ibbotson and the Conscience of Kansas radio show on Tuesday evenings. But I, I doubt Paul will be at this event. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> We've got... No uh, what's up? No comment. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you can get your tickets at the Sisters of Sound Music. Also, uh, on the wild side, where, where are those locations in uh, Manhattan if people want to pick some tickets up? They're both down here in Aggieville. Uh, old, older folks will remember the building that Sisters of Sound is in now. It used to be called Say Cheese. There you are. I see you now. There. there. I, I, I pressed the right button, I think. I'm going to steal that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it used to be called Say Cheese, and it's uh, just across the way from O'Malley's Alley here behind Olson's Shoes. Um, and then on the wild side is where, is it, where it's always been on East Morrow, 1128 Morrow, M-O-R-O. And our phone, those phone numbers are listed on our uh, websites, all of our Facebooks, MySpaces. Everything says the same thing now, I think. And you can call ahead. Or come down in person. We'll reserve things for you and take uh, uh, on the or you know orders over the phone too. But if you come down in person or and order early, you're gonna save five bucks. So early bird specials fifteen, and then if you wait till the event starts, you'll be paying twenty bucks. So I reward people who buy tickets that give me peace of mind. Do it early. <laughs> Do it early. Keep your That's promoters right. happy. Keep your promoters yeah. happy. The fifth and annual. also, if you buy early, um, you'll get a ticket, and part of that ticket then becomes a coupon so that you get $5 off of the Aggie Fest t-shirt. Maybe you should give out free condoms with it, <laughs> with the tickets. No. That's an idea. <laughs> uh, you could. <laughs> I just thought of that. Uh, that's that's right. right. I mean, you, okay, go ahead. If, if, <laughs> if, if, if uh, the greatest concert promoter in the history of mankind, Tim Dixon, is listening, uh, that that's a freebie for you, Tim. Give out condoms with your concert tickets. Um, Aggie Fest 2010, October 1st and 2nd, the 5th Annual Music Festival. Uh, you guys are doing this thing all over uh, Aggieville, pretty much. Yeah. You, you guys yeah, have got a ton of venues involved. We've got eight. One of those being Triangle Park, the little patch of grass that's in between Aggieville and campus. We've had a stage there the last few years, and it's been a big hit, and... Actually, last year, the Dead Girls, after the festival was over, asked me if they could play over at Triangle Park um, because they wanted to uh, perform for all their underage crowd. So it will be an all-ages crowd. We'll have the opportunity to see the Dead Girls over there. I think they're playing Saturday at 6 p.m. at Triangle Park. Boy, that's and another... another... Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Oh, that's just another perv, perv magnet uh, opportunity. That's right. Oh, okay, but but uh, it's called jailbait. <laughs> All right, uh, but uh, okay, go go ahead. Yeah, li li list them down. It, and then um, Dead Girls will be headlining that night later at Annie Mae's Parlor, and Annie Mae's is one of our good friends, one of our our old standards, somebody we can always count on. Jeff Denny and the folks at Annie Mae's Parlor. Um, we've added some of our other. Uh, historical, traditional venues that we've had for the whole time. Blue Stem Bistro. It's a great little coffee shop down here in Aggieville. The Dusty Bookshelf. After hours, we're going to uh, play music among the book stacks. It's a really awesome venue. And uh, O'Malley's. O'Malley's Alley, just across the way from Sisters of Sound. Uh, that's a great outdoor, outback venue. And then we've added three new venues this year, one of those being the Ale House, which is uh, formerly Tank's Tavern, or formerly Confetti's Party Shop, formerly Game Guy. <laughs> anyway, it's the Ale House, and it's it's uh, it's uh, just across the street from Triangle Park, and then across the alley from it, basically next door, the Loft, that is the building that burned down a few years ago, and they rebuilt it, and there is a, the building, uh, there's a bar there called the Loft, and it happens to be next door to Planet Sub, who's going to be providing me and my volunteers with food one of these one of the days of the festival. Now this is all within the confines of what is called Aggievale in right. in the heart of Manhattan. I understood sure. a, a fact, and and this is from back in the eighties, that that uh, several block area, whatever two, three, four blocks of of what they call Aggievale, there is more beer sold and consumed there than any other comparable area of that size in the world. Would you say that could, you know, that, 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 that's a possibility still uh, today? 
I don't know. We're a really diverse business district. We've got everything for all, all ages at all times of the day. Damn. Oh, okay. <laughs> nightlife is obviously different than daytime down here in Aggieville. But uh, the daytime offers something for families, too. So it's a great area. Yeah, it's and it, so it's not just all bars anymore. That's what it was back when, uh, you know, uh, back in 82, like that Asia song, I remember, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Asia. There, there are plenty of bars, and I would say we're at capacity on bars. Okay. Right? There are also, we've also got the highest concentration of the best restaurants in town down here in Aggieville, too. Cool. Do, do you have uh, Korean food? We do not, but we just opened a Chinese grocery store, and we ha- and the best Chinese, <laughs> Chinese grocery town. store. Uh, right. Thai food or Nepalese food? Nope. Not yet. The best we- Chinese restaurant in town is here. I I, I feel a, an entrepreneurial uh, uh, opportunity here. Yeah, if you can find a vacancy, good luck. We can. We that's called giving <laughs> people incentive to leave. <laughs> You can give people incentive to leave. You buy them out. The building empty for longer than three days down here. Or you do mafia stuff. Yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's called incentive to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you that this this thing is going to be quite uh, the the incredible incredible edible little event you guys are you're doing up there. Have have you started planning next year's? Aggie Fest, or do you want to get through this one first? Yeah, let's get through this one first. I am already working on New Year's Eve up here in Ag- in Aggieville, but will this be a like two, three, four times a, a year uh, event? Is, is that what you're intending to do, or not this particular event? Aggie Fest is supposed to happen once a year. In okay. The uh, Konza is supposed to happen once a year, sometime in the summer, whenever we get. The regulations worked out so that we can uh, have it be the camping festival that we want it to be. But we also do Manhattan Metal Fest, and that's at the end of October. And this year, it's the 10th annual this year, and this year we're having the Metal Fest down at the Wareham Opera House, complete with a zombie ball, a zombie march from City Park to downtown, and that's on Saturday, October 30th for the zombie ball and all that at the Opera House. But That could be the, a perv fest. Yeah. What do you think, Jim? Hey, I'll tell you. <laughs> if, if you want to go to Aggieville, we will go get it going with the pervs. I remember some swinging times in Aggieville when I was of age or just... I was underage and I would cheat, So, but it's not fun anymore when you're over 21. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So once again, the the particulars. Well, it's not, it's not Aggie, yes, absolutely. What once again? Tell us the particulars then of of when, where, why, and uh, what for, and how much. Uh, why and what for? Because Manhattan never has enough music. There will never be enough music. So we want more music all day, every day. Rock on! And Live music, we, you mean? Music. Yeah. Huh? Live music. Correct. Yes, uh, yeah. of course. Well, I've, None Bad of this Madonna came. stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, you said a bad word, and I'll thank you to kindly take that back. I, <laughs> I retract my statement. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Cass yeah. did. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't, don't, don't start no wars with the mayor of the city. Uh, he'll, 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 he'll have you uh, arrested or uh, arrested or what was it you said earlier? Barista? No, uh, I, I have been arrestive. Arrestive. <laughs> That's a that di- yes. <laughs> so, anyway, there's never enough live entertainment and music down here in Aggieville, and we'd like to see some more. We also enjoy giving our local bands a big opportunity to meet a lot of new people from a lot of different regions all over the state, all over the country, really. And uh, that really helps our local bands out, you know, with their networking and uh, getting other gigs. Uh, you know, and then younger people, it's just bands that are just starting out, we're, it's not intimidating to come play Aggie Fest. And it's, uh, we're not we're not exclusive, we don't cut anybody out, unless we don't have the space. If we have the space, we'll accommodate you, the space and the time. But it's a great place for a band to start out and get some experience under their belt. And uh, it starts on Friday, October 1st, at 6 p.m., and it'll go till bar close that night, and then we... Uh, 
roll it out again on Saturday at 4 p.m. And it'll go to close that night, too. And one other uh, venue I wanted to mention, it's a new venue called The Legends Room, and it's a spinoff of Kite's Bar and Grill down here in Aggieville. So it's a nice little private room that we're able to put the kinds of music we can't put other places. Well, I'll tell you, I appreciate you making some time for us today. I'm hoping that me or Ross or Ann of Green Hay Bales can make our way to Aggie Fest. Uh, we've been promoting it on, 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 on KJAG. And, uh, but you'll have to get us a parking place because <laughs> <laughs> I've never found one down there yet. <laughs> you can park on campus on the evenings and weekends, by the way. Oh, Ooh, on the campus, like on the grass. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> or just halfway up the curb. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I thank you, sir. I appreciate you making some time for us today. And uh, I'll keep in touch, and we'll get this thing rolling. All right. I'll have some tickets for you when you get here. Definitely. I have appreciate a great it. festival. Thanks, Evan. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. And uh, world-famous Cheeky Jaguar, you show. Uh, I have to do this every year, and I was really hoping that we could get a chance to do it. Um, we can't do that. What? Oh. Well, I have a... Uh, I have a little friend who uh a little friend who is who is well he's not a he's not a little friend he's more of one of these guys who is in the same camp as a Marcia Smith or a an asshole or a Hollywood California uh, a big asshole <laughs> a fat fucking <laughs> asshole they don't like me and <laughs> who there doesn't was, there, <laughs> was a, there was a guy back in the day by the name of David Go we called him David G G O Go G O E. He didn't like me. I, I would call it Goad. And we kept going back and forth. And finally, uh, we had competing radio shows. And one night on AlternaCast.com, I placed a challenge. And he accepted that challenge on the air. And here's that bit right now. Going once. Going twice. Sold to a man with a big blue hat. We're going to try this again. I was trying to get the tape queued up. Sorry about that. I had spies who would go to other radio shows. <laughs> they would tape nasty things that were said about me and bring them over to me while I was on the air. <laughs> oh, when, when they were off the air, they would say, oh, that fucking jig. <laughs> and they would record it, huh? That's right. oh, I, I would do that. I've done that. <laughs> Here we go. Choose your weapon. I don't give a shit if it's sword, if it's guns, whatever they do. You want to hand, Philippine, and a steel case, I will assure you one thing. I will scream one thing. I will walk away with first. And I never said that I fought fair. I just typed the name. But by the way, uh, yeah, in the street, where yeah, your mom's in the street, the back of the house, she in the street, the mother. Basically, well, thank you very much for that. This, this evolved into a phone conversation that I had with him on another person's radio show. Lord. Let me see if I can find it. You can leave. what we actually no, no, said here. Here we go. A total fallacy. You I N me one day. I don't know how. I, he sounds like Nixon. Closing my I M. You managed to I N me one day, and uh, of course, you know I. I kept it out of my you're, mouth. You're, you're, you're being a moron and you talk to me, but go ahead. So, I don't mean to cut you, you off. Can't, you, can't say, you can't say that I've never talked to you. On the air. I, no, no, I've talked to you on the air as well. But from day one, you've made it very clear that the only thing that you wanted to do <laughs> was be a total jerk. So I well, thanks. Myself. Now, you might, you might call saying that. But all Vietnam veterans should fucking die. Controversy. You're right. It will create controversy. And when they find you hanging from a tree somewhere, they call that fucking graveyard dead. So that's a graveyard dead. That was a terroristic threat. Yeah, really <laughs> Go ahead. I don't mean to I catch you say, off. I'm I just will, thinking out loud. I will. I will say one thing. But there's no question about it. You know, Paul Thomas probably had a position all by himself. This was back when technology was not he the greatest for phone calls good. on the internet. Thank you very much. Can I talk now? Can I talk now? 
Sure. <laughs> you're you're gonna hang on. You're not gonna take off. We're gonna have a pleasant conversation or try to have one. I don't know if we'll have a pleasant one, but well, we'll have okay, one. well that's up to you. But um, the situation with Paul Thomas, my close personal longtime friend. Actually, he's not. I just met him two days. Ba- ba- basically, we don't have a lot of time to get into the whole thing. But but basically, what it was was me me and David G finally met, and it was like a face to face thing. I went around this guy. I did all sorts of nasty, horrible things to him, and we finally had the big confrontation. Now, that didn't happen to end in a court of law. Now, the confrontation that I'm going to have with Marsha, Marsha, Marsha and Hollywood, California is uh, probably going to end in a court of law. Oh, yeah. And Marcia, it's going to be over on October Mar- 1st. Marsha, you might be getting a, a knock on the door from a sheriff's deputy that um, needs you to be a witness. That could happen. It could happen. I meant, I wonder what's going to be asked of Marcia Stevenson. I don't know. That's all for our attorney to sort out. <laughs> we Sometimes we have to let our attorney speak for us, so that's one of the times. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that we do every year here on the big show, uh, d- during our birthday show, is I do my usual thank you for listening and all the bullshit, which you, all, you guys... I, I, I appreciate you. you. You guys have made me basically the, the most downloaded and popular radio personality on the damn Internet. Uh, I appreciate everything you guys do for the show. I like the fact you guys have embraced this live stream thing and the fact that the major media has not embraced the live stream thing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like us. <laughs> How do you do that? What are you doing? <laughs> How do you do that? Why do you do that? What do you mean you do do that for a thousand dollars? Our consultant said seventy thousand a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I've I've weathered the storm through the seventeen years, through the Dave G's, through the Dez's, through the Marcia Smiths. Believe me, you're gonna get defeated. It's gonna happen because there ain't been nobody beat me yet. And you ain't going to, Pete. And as far as Hollywood, California... Ed Miles Edward Baldwin. We're going to take care of you, buddy, because I'll tell you right now, you will lose. You will lose. Why don't they play your old spit and argues anymore, Ed? Why don't they do that, Ed? (laughs) Was that at your request? (laughs) <laughs> or is it just bell choirs and Sunday sermons you like to <laughs> like to air? Believe no me. more, no more shrine circuses. <laughs> <laughs> the celebration is no taking more, place. No more tea parties in that building <laughs> over there. <laughs> Why are you so angry, Ed? <laughs> you are so angry, and you and, and, you and you abuse yourself. You continue to listen to us. <laughs> you, you can't. You can't turn off the channel. <laughs> you won't. So we'll continue to make report after report after report. It is our First Amendment right as journalists. We are a member of the press, whether you like it or not. not. (laughs) And with that, thank you for listening to us for 17 years. And here's to 17 more. And uh, the preceding has been a KJAG Radio news and entertainment special. Leaving your house after screwing your girlfriend. Oh wait, you didn't hear my voice so clearly due to the fact that I don't want to be around and watch your feet. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha! Studies show that watching TV. I had to end it on a Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Is that it? Yep, that's it.